the most important part in building anything are cigars. So we are about to take these 200 quart Sterilite tubs and put some Python portals from Specialty Enclosure Designs on it. This is going to be a video of how you make those and we get to see Jake work. Knees to chest! <laughs> Alright. Today, Justin and I are making these. These are Python portals from Specialty Enclosures Designs. Um, they're going to be going into 200 quart Sterilite tubs. Um, and basically, when if you order some of these from uh, David, you're gonna get you're gonna get these tops. These are the top and bottom pieces, and these are your two sides. You got corner brackets, and depending on the size that you get, you may need center brackets. We didn't need them for this build. And then you're gonna get screws. Uh, Justin and I got several of these. Uh, we already put together one, or uh, several actually, to uh, show you guys. All right, all right guys, so the one big important thing we're setting these up. Um, so you've got your brackets here, or your you know, corner pieces here. And um, you notice one side has three holes, one side has two. So when you're setting these up, your bottom and top pieces, the long ones, those sides are gonna have the three holes on them. So you need to make sure that's all the way to the side and you can put screws into all three of those holes onto the top and bottom pieces. So they're both just gonna go on like that and you're gonna screw them in. Um, and then for the sides, they're gonna have go on these two. It's gonna go in just like that. So you can access them both. Now you have to do this on both sides. Again, make sure the two, two holes are on the side, three holes are on top. You can do that all the way around and make sure this is where, these are your slides for your glass on the inside here. And when you're setting this up, make sure that these are on the inside of um, the portal. They're gonna go in like that, smooth side, outside, divots inside. So you gotta put those together like that. And you'll do that all the way around. I'm gonna go ahead and screw a couple of these in. Um, so again, make sure everything's wedged completely in. You want it to all be flush. You take one of these screws. We like to do the tops first. It's you know it's obviously easier. Um, so you can start by putting that in. Take a screwdriver. You can use a drill if you have one. Um, but David yeah, doesn't recommend a drill. It's not recommended because you can screw through it, kind of. Yeah. Well, that and, and the brackets are. I mean, they're 3D print, right. so they're kind of like brittle. They're kind of so brittle. it's easy to crack. Right. So if so, you're using a drill, be very delicate with it. Very, very delicate. So just apply a little bit of pressure with your screwdriver. Start to turn it in. And it'll catch. Try to get the screw in as straight as possible. It can be a little difficult holding it like this, but do what you can. Catches in there. Boom. There you go, that's one side. And then again, when you're doing the other side, you can go ahead and do all three, but you know, you guys don't need to see how to screw in some screws. And again, that is underneath top screw again kind of a pain <laughs> notice it's easier to lay it flat when you do it easier to access with both hands Pain to get him to catch, apparently. There you go. 
so that's one corner um, I would suggest doing the corners on both sides first and then doing the other side and putting them together because again these have to be in between the top and bottom on the corners just like so and again slides on the inside of the portal and then just repeat the other corners yep so we're gonna put a few more of these together and then we're gonna cut out some tubs and stick them in some tubs so we'll get back to you with that boom okay <clears throat> so now you want to line this up once the frame is made and then what we're going to do is we're going to tape it uh, to the tub and then we go in we trace the inside and then we'll cut it and uh, make it one step closer. So for the cut, David recommends one of these Dremel saw maxes. You can use a Dremel, a, like a traditional Dremel or some other tool. He just finds that these work easier. Uh, you can get these at Lowe's, they're about 100 bucks. I think you can get them on Amazon for about 80, they're a little cheaper. Um, but if you're making a bunch of these, very much worth the investment. Yeah, yeah, and so once you cut it with the Dremel, it's gonna more or less melt some of the plastic, and so what you wanna do is just take a uh, piece of sandpaper or a file and just smooth all this out. I mean, you won't even be able to see that with that frame on it. You won't even notice, right. no. All right, so now we are uh, marking where we're gonna put the screws. You wanna pre-drill holes where these dots are. Uh, and we're doing, what is it, five across the top, and then three across the sides, not counting the corners. <coughs> um, so then you wanna pre-drill these holes and then you wanna set the screws. And so again, this is not something you really want to do with a drill, if you can avoid it. You just want to be delicate. They really don't have to be super snug, just as long as, uh, as, long as it keeps the, uh, the frame attached. Because, I mean, they're not deep. They're not, they're not super long or anything like that. You also want to kind of alternate where you're doing them instead of doing them all in one concentric line, you know what I mean? Like one way around the tub. Okay. 
<laughs> you want to do them kind of like a drum head where you're like a tune drum, but you do it like alternating. That way yeah. you get even. <laughs> So then after this, you will get your glass cut. Um, you can have your lid if you're doing an RHP, you mount an RHP to the, to the lid. I'll, I'll show that with mine. Um, I also got a little light to try out too. And uh, so this is the actual like building of the frame and attaching. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. They look really good once they're done. Now we got more. Pretty sweet. They make tubs look good. These are 200 quart stair lights. You can get them at Walmart. They're about, what, 20, 25 bucks a piece? 23. Uh, and then any finishing touches like going through and smoothing this edge again, just so the snake or something doesn't get cut. Also, just take some sandpaper and just hit it. And uh, that's pretty much it. You get your glass cut, you get it set up. You're good to go. You can see like the, this is like seamless. All these tracks line up, um, just attached to the back, easy. There you have Okay, so the video quality on this section is going to be a little different because I'm shooting on my phone. I forgot to grab the GoPro. Um, but this is going to be mounting the RHP and the light that I'm using to the lid of the Python portal. <clears throat> uh, Bavarium Electronics recently updated their heat panels in 2019. <clears throat> I think it's to, the, they've changed a, a few small things to make them a little easier to mount and also the product itself has actually changed in terms of I think construction a little bit uh, in terms of internals so now I'm about to mount the RHP uh, this little light I got off Amazon for about 14 or 15 bucks uh, it is currently just mounted with some 3M pads they've had a few days to kind of sit there and cure this is not really going anywhere um, it actually works out perfectly it's, it's small but I don't really need a ton of, uh, of light in there. This is this is gonna do the trick. Uh, so heat panel wise, with my first build, I actually tried it mounted on one side to give a hot and a warm end. Uh, after talking to John Irby on the Chondrocast a little bit though, he kind of talked about doing a center mounted pad and that gives them sort of a little bit more of a gradient in a way where they have two cool ends and then kind of the warmer end in the middle. Uh, so if you're wanting to try that, center mounting it um, if you prefer to do a hot end that's cool too I think if you are going to do one end it needs to be the end that has the on the, the cords are on the same end that way you don't have one cord going left and one cord going right uh, so for the sake of, uh, of continuity it's probably easier to keep it on one end uh, on, to keep the, the cords going out going out the same end now what I've done is I've laid it where I wanted it. I took the drill, uh, put this drill bit right in there with, obviously with the drill attached, drill pre-drilled holes so that I know exactly where it's going. And I can just mount it right on through. Um, this drill bit is a 530 seconds. Uh, pretty much just matched it up with the size of the screw I'm using, which is a three by uh, by five thirty seconds. Um, and so then I'll just mount it, just mount it on there with some nuts, and I'm on my way. So now the RHP is mounted. I did actually have to go through with a slightly wider drill bit. And expand the hole in the lid a little bit because this was a little snug it was hard to get these in and out they are now attached uh, once you are have attached them with the nut and stuff you definitely want to use a screwdriver to tighten them up you don't want to use a drill because you will likely crack the housing for the actual heat panel this is what it looks like from the top um, obviously 
three inch or two inch, whichever ones these are, two inch screws, three inch screws are a little much. Um, but I mean, you, you may be able to still stack this, but so either way, these aren't going to be stacked for me. So this really doesn't matter. It's not pretty, but it doesn't, you know, it's also something I'm not worried about because I'm an aesthetics guy over or uh, functionality over aesthetics guy. So these can be shorter, probably about half the, uh, half the length they actually are. But they go through, attach the lid. And uh, so now I have to the cut notches right here because these cords are gonna sit right in that. I'm gonna have to cut them in the tub as well. Um, so stay tuned for that. All right, so I've made, because of these, the way these Sterilite lids are made, this whole lip drops into the top of this, so I had to cut some notches for these cords to go. I just took a soldering iron and melted them. I'm going to take some sandpaper here and finish them off a little bit, smoothing them out. And so then these cords just drop in, like so. So that way, there's really no slack except for up here, but that can easily be uh, be fixed. And then it just runs out the back. So I love these lids because the, the clasps on them are really strong. Don't have to worry about, uh, let me make sure I'm not burning the whole garage down. Don't have to worry about anything getting out of these things that are on there really snug if you're keeping you know, Condors in here, they're not really pushers. Amazon Trebo is the same thing. And uh, I'll plug in the light here. Show you all what it looks like. All right, so lit. This is what we're looking at. That looks really good. That's the perfect amount of light. I really like that. That looks good. <clears throat> all right so next is going to be setting up the perch holders anything else i want to do on the inside uh the glass i got cut for this is not the right size so i'm gonna have to take this whole tub to the glass people tomorrow and just get them to custom uh custom fit it with whatever size i need so cool okay so now i'm getting these uh I'm wanting to mount these brackets so i kind of eyeball it i don't some people probably do it a little more methodically. Um, I just kind of eyeball where I want the perch as far as height. Um, so it's going to run right down the middle and I've decided that about that four inch mark is where I want the uh, the top hole on that perch holder to go. So once I mount that there then I just drill the bottom hole and set them uh, with a screw, uh, screw and bolt. And then I'm going to do that on the other side and then cut this piece down to whatever size I need to make it fit those perch holders, no problem. And this is CPVC, so this is true half inch. This is um, much smaller than regular half inch PVC. This is what I use for smaller snakes until they get a little older, uh, and then they get switched over to the regular half inch PVC. So, this is a little smaller, a little thinner, but the snakes like it thinner. <clears throat> right y'all, it's a moment of truth. The tub is done. Still waiting on my thermostat to come in, but it's hooked up to another one at the moment, so I'll show you what the final product is. Check it out. All right, so I did a uh, what I call the Brahms Boomstick. Um, so this is a piece of half-inch CPVC. Uh, I got one of the dragonfly perches, one of the halves, full dragonfly, another half. Um, was going to center mount the heat panel, but decided last minute to just do it on one side. A um, little light in the back. And so the whole thing looks like this. I'm going to add some fake leaves and some greenery, and I'll do a final shot of that as well. Um, simple water bowl. I'm going to get something a little heavier duty. This thing's pretty flimsy, and it's going to spill water everywhere. <clears throat> so now I'm going to introduce this girl into this cage. All right, so this is the girl that's going into that tub. She's uh, outgrown this 20 quart. She could stay in there a little longer, but I'd prefer to get her in the bigger thing. And because I got another one that needs to get moved into this one, 
Uh, this male was the same size as her when he got moved into, into his. Uh, so, I set this girl up and get her squared away. And so this will last her uh, very close into her adult size, depending on just exactly how big she gets. Eventually, this pipe will be upgraded to a half inch. Uh, they do prefer them a little thinner, so that's what she gets for now. As she gets a little more size on her, she'll get bumped up to true half inch PVC. And uh, it'll be a little more fitting for her. All right, so now that mine's done, we'll show you Jake's setups for his carpets. So this is how I would set up a Chondro. Uh, the Python porters are nice because you can use them, if you put them on a 200 core, you can use them for Amazons, um, some Boiga species, if they get really big, that's probably not going to be enough. Uh, at adult sizes, chondros, like I said, carpet pythons, brettles, uh, I mean the, the list goes on, they can literally use it for all kinds of stuff, but for chondros, So basically how I set up my python portal was pretty simple. Um, this is the tub on the right, you can see I've got a couple of them. Um, but how I set this up for a carp python is I put these shelves in here. I do think they are a little big so I may try and find a slightly smaller solution but we'll see about that. It's still a little bit of a work in progress. We've got the shelf that covers about three quarters of the enclosure a water dish, paper towels. I am going to be changing out the paper towels with a loose substrate. I just haven't been able to get my hands on it yet. Um, and with the glass, I actually put these little sticky tabs on here. I had two on all of them, but they uh, some of them fell off. So I gotta put them back on. On this side, there's my little buddy. Uh, but over here, we've got just a hide box. And uh, yeah really simple but yet really effective. Um, I have found that carpets really love and utilize shelves more than a uh, more than um, a regular perching option like PVC. Um, but and then I've got this little dowel that I put in here to keep the glass from set up and then I've got two more set up the exact same way. So these are my iPhone ports from Specialty Enclosure Designs. Hope y'all enjoyed. And that's it y'all, that's how they're done. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Hit us up on Instagram or Facebook. Hope it was helpful. I'll have all the gear you need down in the description. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, or Spotify. And follow us on Instagram and Facebook at the Culture Podcast. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want more, subscribe. Uh, we appreciate you watching and you listening. See you all later.